Let's go. And we will see. And thank God for this Lord's Day. Today is the ninth Sunday after Trinity and the first Sunday in the month of August 2023, the sixth day of August 2023. This is your life boy today. Handling our fellow Christians' offense is our topic today. And that's a very interesting one because there just must be offense, no matter how holy the people that are involved are. Even amongst bishops, there are offenses, amongst pastors, amongst different classes of people, especially in the church. And how do we handle such offenses when they do arise? Let's go read from the gospel according to St. Matthew in chapter 18, and let's come up with some lessons from there. Now let's go. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it will be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the death of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin. For it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the man by whom the temptations come. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always behold the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray? Does he not leave the ninety-nine of the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it truly, I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. So, it is not the will of my Father, who is in heaven, that, that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault. Between you and him alone, if he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, 
take one or two others along with you, that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Handling a fellow Christian's offense is a very delicate issue. And interestingly, it's even more delicate when it's amongst supposedly experienced Christians, perhaps those even holding ministerial offices as pastors, deacons, pastors, I mean, um, uh, bishops, and whatever in the church. And offenses would of necessity arise. Offenses will arise because somebody was preferred and uh, uh, made to go higher than another person. Offenses will arise when you have little contests as to who is going to be the clerical secretary of the synod, who is going to be the uh, president of a student's body amongst uh, student priests and such other things. But when such offenses arise, they must be uh, uh, dealt with by way of reconciliation and the reconciliation is that of necessity tell your brother whatever you think he has done for you and if he's able to say oh sorry I didn't mean to do that or well I did it but I am sorry that I did it then you've gained your brother something like that happened to me recently and I had to tongue lash somebody very very severely because I felt that he had offended me and of course he kept on saying he was sorry and at a stage I was beginning myself to also feel sorry for being so hard on him because in all honesty I was expecting him to try to find justification so I should tongue lash him the more but the man just kept on saying I am sorry I am sorry I am sorry so what else now do you want do you want to cut his head off so when somebody says I am sorry to you then what you need to do is to forgive because you remember what even in the scriptures the lord's prayer when the lord taught his disciples part of it is that you ask for forgiveness from the father and you say forgive me even as i've forgiven those who have offended me so have you forgiven all those who are offending you or have offended you in the faith you're in the same church you are in the same college of theology. You are doing so many things together. Yes, you need to let them understand that they need to say sorry. And when they choose not to say sorry, yes, that's when you now treat them like publicans. Just ignore them. Let them be. But if they say sorry to you, then you need to forgive. And that's the way you should handle all matters within families. Brothers and sisters, of necessity, you will quarrel. Especially in these days when things are rough and tough. In a place like Nigeria where they say they have removed oil subsidy, things are so expensive. There is no way. Very easily people become irritable now and offend one another. But you must take note of handling a fellow Christian's offense. Be ready to forgive others. Be ready to seek for forgiveness when you know that you have done something wrong. Stop pretending that you don't recognize that you have done that thing that is wrong. Stop pretending that you don't realize that you have told lies against that other person. Stop pretending that you don't know that you have been involved in backbiting or you have taken something uh, that belongs to him or her or you have made him uh, look very bad when he really is not that bad. And so come out. Ask for forgiveness and so either ways, whether you are the one in the offense or the one that is offended, is either you humble yourself and ask, seek for forgiveness privately with that person, or you, if you are the one that was offended, then um, uh, forgive all such people and the Lord will forgive you too whenever you come into offense. Now, all of us were born in sin and the wages of sin is death. But Jesus Christ came to give his life as a ransom for all of us. And that's why God gave him his beloved son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And that is 
God's way of forgiving us and restating us and reconciling us with him. So if you are not yet a Christian, perhaps everything that I've been saying in this message is not for you. It's now time for you to get re reconciled to Christ. So you know you've not been a Christian all your life. You've not given your life to Christ. You've been living in sin. You can't say of a fact in the Lord that if you would go out of the world today, that you will go to be with the Lord. You are not sure. You probably will end up in hell. This is the time for you to seek for forgiveness too. From all your offenses, ask the Lord to come into your life and begin a new life in Christ. Bow down your head, close your eyes, and say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I have been taught how to handle Christians' offenses amongst themselves. But I know for a fact that I am not even yet a Christian. But I want to become a Christian from today. I want to follow the ways of Christ. Therefore, I ask that you forgive me, Lord Jesus. And I ask that in forgiving all my sins, let a new life begin in me today. I accept you as Lord and Savior from today. And I pray that you accept me too as your child, as one with you, part of your family. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just said that faith prayer, welcome to the fold of Christ. You need to find a Bible-believing church where you can grow in the faith and know the more, especially about handling a fellow Christian's offense. So I will always recommend that you join us in the Anglican Church, Oroki Esed Extension, Ushogo. For now, we are still in the chapel hall of the Olive Branches Middle and High Schools, Onyiko and Gokyumi Bodden Drive, Oroki Esed Extension, Ushogo. You can join us every Tuesday, late in the afternoon, 5 o'clock for our midweek services. It's usually a Bible study. Because there we know that we should search the scriptures, for in them we believe that we have eternal life, and they are they that testify of Jesus Christ that we hold on to. But you can also join us on Sundays, for instance, if you are in this fellowship with us right now at a point earlier than 9 o'clock, and you happen to be in Oshobo, you can still find your way to the Anglican Church of the Extension in the Chapel Hall of the Olive Branches by High Schools, when you come and go to me, God will drive with the extension of Shobu. Nine o'clock every Sunday, that's when we also meet. So, look at the screen. You can see some bank account details. You want to be able to have a purpose built place where we can have our church. Do something, put something in that account, and the Lord will bless you. And as you go out today, or do I say, as you come to join us in the church, if you are in Oshobu, you need to say this prayer. Say, Lord, grant me to seek reconciliation with anyone who offends me and also to seek reconciliation with whomsoever I have also offended, that we can together handle our offenses together the way the Lord will have us have it. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So go out today. Learn to handle your offenses with other Christians and vice versa in the way of the Lord and it will be well with you. God bless you.